Hello everybody, how's it going? For this video, I'm going to be rating my Tom Ford fragrances that you see right here from my least favorite to my most favorite. And the thing is, I have tried a lot of the Tom Ford scents. I don't have the bottles, but you know what? Change of plans. Off the top of my head right now, I will tell you my least favorite to my most favorite. If I forget some of them, then it means that assume that they're at the bottom because they were not that memorable. So in last place, I am going to give it to Lost Cherry. Honestly, wasn't really a fan of it. Lost Cherry kind of had this like syrupy, Robitussin cherry type of vibe to it that just wasn't my thing. You know, I think I would love it better on other people, but for me, it was a total pass. The next one, and we're going from least to, to favorite, and so I don't know exactly how many fragrances I'm doing, but Neroli Portofino, I was really excited to try um, because I thought it would be an amazing summertime fragrance. And I still think it's a great scent for hot weather, but the performance wasn't the best. And after giving that one a test, I realized that I'm not the biggest fan of Neroleum fragrances. It kind of comes across a bit too mature for my liking. Um, so it was also a pass for me. Next is, you know, I was gonna stick with just regular with the private blends but i'll include some of the the standard line this is this might shock some people but yeah noir extreme not my favorite now i know that a lot of people love noir extreme but for me it gets taken in too many different directions that i like it then i don't like it then i like it then i don't like it while i'm wearing it you know what i mean sometimes it smells nice and sweet with a hint of powderiness and then within the next minute, it kind of reminds me of like my grandma putting on makeup. You know what I mean? So it just was a bit too hoppy for my liking. And that's the reason that it's sitting lower on this list. Um, and I did smell that one like, you know, I was like, oh, maybe it's my skin chemistry. But even when I sprayed it in the air, because it did kind of last a bit in my room when I sprayed it at nighttime, it was kind of like settled on my bed sheets. And the same thing was happening at nighttime where I was like, I smelled the scent. I'm like, okay, it's nice. And then like I'm tossing and turning in bed and I'm like, why does this smell like kind of like an old woman? You know what I mean? And then it would kind of go back and forth. So it wasn't just with my skin. It was with, you know, on sheets, even in the air. It was just too hoppy for me. Next is, I was, you know what? I was gonna say, fucking fabulous but let me hold off on that one because i feel like there's something else that is not my personal favorite well the mandarino i can't really remember that one if we're being completely honest so you know what right now i will say fabulous by tom ford i'm not the biggest fan of tonka bean but this kind of is reminiscent to me of like the smell of a clean baby like a newborn baby just got showered with johnson and johnson shampoo that is kind of what this smells like some people get a baby wipes sort of vibe but the people that love fabulous hate hearing that description they're like no your noses are wrong this doesn't smell like baby wipes but i mean there's a lot of people that get the baby wipe smell the more that i wear this the less i kind of get that sort of scent but that shampoo, like the lavender in the Johnson & Johnson shampoo is very prominent in this, in this fragrance for me. And the only reason that this is a bit lower is just because with the name fucking fabulous, I wanted it to be something either really amazing or polarizing to the point where I didn't like it. You know, it was either a go big or go home type of fragrance. But for me, I found this to be very, very safe. It was a very mild fragrance. Now the performance is pretty good. Like this definitely pushes past eight, nine hours when I wear it on my skin. It has great projection. It has a decent scent trail. But again, like the marketing for this fragrance, naming it something like fucking fabulous and it coming out as just mild, mid, whatever you call it, it was just kind of a disappointment for me um, with the actual scent. Yeah, it just it's it's a bit too it's too safe for me. Like this doesn't doesn't smell fabulous and it doesn't smell fucking fabulous either. You know what I mean? So fucking fabulous, a bit lower. I'm kind of losing track of the numbers that I'm doing. But on top of that, I am going to place Velvet Orchid. 
Now, I don't wear velvet orchid. It's actually something my girlfriend wears, but you know, it's a floral type of fragrance. It does kind of have a little bit of a mature type of scent, but I still like, I still like it when I smell it on her. And I think that she does kind of layer it with other things to kind of give it a better sort of scent. But, you know, honestly with Fabulous and Velvet Orchid, they can be interchanged. So it, it, goes, it goes back and forth with that. And by the way, I'll put the names of the fragrances in the description if you need help following along. I know I don't have texts on the screen right now because we're doing this off cuff. But yeah, if you want to follow along, I'll just put the order of what I'm doing in the description, okay? All right, next is going to be, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be Black Orchid. All right, so now I think this is gonna be like my top four. Yeah, we're gonna stick with my top four on this. Black Orchid by Tom Ford is a really, really nice fragrance. It smells like truffles, it's chocolatey, it has some gardenia in it. So if you want that floral kiss, it's there. It's just not my personal favorite fragrance just because I can't really wear sweeter scents like that that much, but very unisex. Honestly, all the Tom Fords that I've mentioned so far are very unisex fragrances. Um, I do like, well, with Velvet Orchid that does go more feminine, but Black Orchid is a woman's scent, but a lot like anybody wears it. It just has the unisex sort of appeal. So if you want something sweet, something very mass appealing, then I would suggest Black Orchid for you. And before I forget, on top of Black Orchid, I'm gonna throw in Soleil Blanc because Soleil Blanc is this coconut fragrance. It has a little bit of a sunscreen vibe, just a touch of it, but it also has some heavy florals in the opening. I remember the first time I smelled Soleil Blanc, I was kind of like, whoa, this is pretty strong. But the next day when I kind of smelled the dry down, dry down of it, I was like, holy shit, this is nice. So I find it to be a very beautiful fragrance. I think that it's a nice scent if you want to wear it in the summertime. The bottle's gorgeous as well, if you care about visuals. So in my, in fourth place, I'm going to give it to Soleil Blanc. It lasts a good amount of time. Yeah, coconutty, florals, summertime, very unisex. All right, I know when people sometimes hear floral, they're like, oh, it's a feminine fragrance, but no, it works on everybody. All right, now we're into the top three. In third place, I'm giving it to Noir de Noir. And this was my first chocolate fragrance that I went head over heels for. And this kind of smells like, like the most luxurious dark chocolate sort of smell. It's just, it smells so good. And I'm a huge fan of dark chocolate, especially if you're kind of drinking it with a little bit of wine. And you kind of get that vibe with this scent. You know, there's dark chocolate. There's also like a hint of wine. But at the same time... Oh my god, it's so good. There is some rose in this fragrance. And don't worry, the rose here isn't mature. It doesn't smell outdated by any means. It's beautifully blended in this fragrance. A lot of people have called this Valentine's Day in a bottle and I completely agree. I really think that Noir de Noir is a fantastic signature scent because there are there's hardly anybody wearing it. A lot of the times people like don't really know too much about Tom Ford private blends. And I'm talking about like in the world, okay? In the fragrance community, of course, everybody knows Tom Ford private blend fragrances, but Noir de Noir is definitely a gem in my opinion. It's something that smells amazing, especially if somebody is in your scent, I bit my tongue, ah, in, in your scent bubble, because it just has like this, it's very approachable, it's sexy, it's seductive, but it's not trying to get noticed. You know, it doesn't have beast mode performance, but that's what I like about it, is it's very intimate, kind of like what a date night is, you know, when you're having a one-on-one -on -one moment with somebody, and you know, when they smell your scent on you, like when they're smelling Noir de Noir on you, and makes them just wanna get closer and closer to you because it just has that sort of appeal. Again, this is a very unisex fragrance. I know more ladies tend to gravitate to this, but honestly, like, yeah, this would, this would smell great on guys as well. It smells fantastic on anybody that wants to just smell absolutely like delicious. If that's what you want to go for, you want to smell delicious, you want someone to take a bite out of your neck in the most consensual way possible, Noir de Noir, Tom Ford. All right, second place. 
tobacco vanille. Now, this fragrance has some sentimental value to me. It not, doesn't, yeah, it's... This is a very sweet type of fragrance, and it honestly kind of smells like gingerbread cookies, in my opinion. It doesn't smell like tobacco and vanilla to me. It's very much reminiscent of the holidays, a very sweet scent. I remember somebody said I smelled like candy with this fragrance, but this is a very comforting scent to me just because of the memories I have associated with it. And it's, oh, it's just, it's so good. It has a little bit of a mysterious vibe to it as well. There's been a lot of people that have asked me about this scent just because I guess Harry Styles used to wear it and I, a lot of celebrities, I guess, used to use this fragrance. But yeah, it's just intoxicating. It really is. And honestly, Noir de Noir and Tobacco Vanille, can, they, they do alternate from time to time with my, you know, with my rankings for them. But yeah, the reason that this is second right now is just because I'm thinking of a very special somebody with this fragrance but this also lasts over 10 hours this thing pushes when you enter the room if you're looking for a fragrance that will get noticed this is the one for you if you want it to be intimate then i would go noir de noir but this definitely is a bold louder type of scent and for a lot of people that are putting down over 200 dollars on a fragrance you know they want something with a little bit of umph they want to make sure that the money is well spent and that's why Tobacco Vanilla is a fan favorite because it delivers in that regard. But again, I don't find this to be a badass tobacco vanilla fragrance. It just smells very cozy, sweet, comforting, gingerbread-like with a chai latte. That is what I smell with Tobacco Vanilla. And in first place, it's not a shocker to anybody watching, but Oud Wood. Oud Wood is still my favorite. I mean, I live in warm weather, so this is definitely the most wearable out of the three that I currently have. But even when I was testing the Tom Ford fragrances when I went to Nordstrom, none of them really gripped me in a way that I was like, oh, wow, I love this. I need to get a full-size bottle of this. But with Oud Wood, this is something that it's my most worn Tom Ford fragrance, and I get nothing but love from this scent. Even for me, when I'm going out doing some errands, I'll throw on this fragrance, and I just love the way I smell in my car. But I have been stopped by people when I was at Target and they were like, you smell really good. What is that? It was like a group of three girls that really just loved this scent. And I'm going to say something that also might not be a popular opinion, but I have worn this in warm weather and it smelled amazing. I've gotten more compliments with this fragrance when I've worn it in the heat than in the cold. Now, of course, a lot of people consider this to be a date night sort of fragrance, a nighttime, a fancy occasion scent, but... If you want to give this a try in the heat, I highly suggest that you do because it shines in a completely different way. And don't think because it says oud that it's a heavy fragrance, that it's something that has to be worn at nighttime because if you wear this in the daytime, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too cloying, too strong. It's not. It's a very aromatic sort of fragrance that is just honestly pretty light, but complex at the same time, to, according to people's noses that you're gonna be around, like the average person, you know, not people watching fragrance videos. So this definitely, out of all the Tom Fords that I've worn, this one and Noir de Noir have gotten the biggest compliments, but I'd say like this one edges it out just because I wear it more often. Um, and yeah, to me, this is, it smells like freshly blended wood and people get mad when I, when I say fresh and oud wood because like no that's not fresh you don't know what you're talking about and it's like no that's literally what it smells like when i wear it and people around me are like you smell really fresh like what is that and they're curious about the scent because a lot of people don't wear woody type of fragrances and the fact that this works well in the heat at least for me like i will stand by that so yeah i will like this is a great signature scent a fantastic fragrance again i'll put the names of the scents in the description below in my rankings for them or yeah you know what i'll rank them below as well and i'll also have discount site links in case you want to support the channel and get them there but of course please buy where you're comfortable all right i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you in the next video bye